Thank you. Good, after good afternoon to everyone. I am uh, Riccardo Bernardini. I work at the University of Udine, and I guess you can smell uh, my dressing code and my slides will smell like academic, but never mind. <laughs> and uh, I'm here to talk uh, a little bit uh, about uh, an idea that we got uh, at the University of Udine to organize a competition that rewards uh, software maintainability and uh, easy of uh, reading and uh, stuff like that. So, a brief outline. First, uh, what is my objective with this talk? Then, uh, what is the problem? What is the solution? What's, what we are doing right now? And some conclusion. Yes, very academic. So, my objective is uh, uh, to tell you about uh, this idea, about how to organize a competition that rewards uh, software quality, and uh, why do I want to do that? Uh, because, uh, first of all, uh, I guess it's something interesting to share. Also, we are still working on this stuff, so we are open to feedback. We will be very happy to hear feedback from, uh, from you. And also, of course, we are also searching for competitors because a competition without competitors is not, it's not going anywhere. So, the problem. Our idea was, uh, you know, um, usually people put a stronger emphasis on uh, quality, software qualities like uh, efficiency, or maybe how fast you can code. There is uh, this well-known IEEE extreme programming competition. Or maybe also ingenuity of solution or stuff like that. But uh, there are not many um, competitions that rewards other aspects of software that, in our opinion, are also very important. So it is how good a software is written, how easy it is to maintain, to read, to modify. I have uh, some experience uh, in uh, modifying open source code, um, both to correct maybe minor bugs, uh, and sometimes to modify them for my work. I work in digital signal processing. And I have experience with, for example, a very well-known uh, program that I wanted to modify uh, for uh, using my research, and uh, the code is uh, so confusing that uh, in the end I gave up. So we decided to try to create a competition that rewards also this kind of uh, quality. Those kind of competition are not common, and uh, there is a very good way, uh, reason. It's easy to measure how fast you can code. I say, code a shell sort algorithm. Start, stop, 20 minutes. Nice. That's easy. It's easy to measure how efficient a program is. Start, stop. That's nice. But uh, how can me you measure something like uh, how easy is to read the program, how easy is to change it, to debug it. The first solution that comes to mind is uh, peer review. Having someone looking at the code and say, oh, this is a good, very well written, this is not so well written, so on. But uh, unfortunately, peer review is quite subjective and people have usually very strong opinion about uh, uh, coding styles. For example, Hungarian notation. Just let me do a check. Uh, how many of you do know what Hungarian notation is? Okay, very good. How many of you do love it, do like it? Few hands, okay. I guess the other one just hate it. <laughs> Okay, I am in the second group, by the way. Casing convention. Do you prefer underscores, camel convention, mixed convention, and also there is the so-called uh, 
section title convention that uh, makes uppercase nouns and verbs, uh, lowercase everything else. Code blocks. How, how do you write blocks? This way, this way, with a large indent, small indent, using tab, using spaces. If you want to start a never-ending uh, religion war, you just uh, bring these uh, arguments uh, in some news group or something like that. And also, if you go to object-oriented programming, you get uh, craziness any time of convention. Those are just two that uh, I experienced. So uh, peer review is not really a good solution. We need uh, some way to measure in some, let's say, fairly objective way. We don't think that uh, our solution is the ultimate solution, but uh, something better than peer review. And the idea is, if you want to measure, for example, how easy is to debug a code, and how robust is a code with respect to uh, error, programming errors, well, let's just try it. So this is our recipe. Take a handful of programmers have the programmer write some code. Then take uh, a handful of so-called spoilers. Gives the code to the spoilers. And the spoilers, will uh, their objective is to put, uh, is to put some uh, nasty, subtle, maybe randomly appearing bugs in the code. Then you get uh, some uh, buggy codes. You take a handful of counter spoilers, give the buggy code to them, let marinate, and uh, measure how much time the counter spoilers need to debug the code. At the end of the day, you have a data set where you have uh, um, spoiled the program, counter spoiler, and debugging time. Intuitively, the debugging time is a function of uh, the quality of the original program. If you write uh, in, for example, um, obf obfuscated C, that's very easy to put a bug uh, in it, and uh, the quality of the counter spoiler, and uh, on the other um, plate of the um, scale, you have the spoiler and the spoiling weight. The spoiling weight is uh, a measure of uh, the amount of code changed by the, by the spoiler. Of course, if you let the spoiler change completely the code, it's too easy to put bugs in it. Uh, in order to take into account that uh, the more you write, uh, the easier it is to put bug, we take into account also of this uh, spoiling weight. We, still, uh, we are still working on what uh, really spoiling weight means uh, formally, but more or less it will be the number of lane changes or something like that. So, in the end we have uh, a set of times that depends on uh, those quantities, and we want uh, to split uh, the, uh, the data we have into the quantities. And for that, uh, we need uh, a model. Basically, we say that, uh, I know, uh, very academic, uh, <laughs> we say that the debugging time is a function of the score of the programmer, of the score of the spoiler, and score of the counter spoiler, plus uh, the spoiling weight, plus uh, some random noise, because of course uh, uh, it depends uh, on maybe many other variables that we cannot handle. The idea is that uh, we have, uh, so we have a set of equations, one equation for each uh, uh, counter-spoiled program, 
And we have this number known. This is number of programmers, the number of spoilers, and number of counter spoilers. And if you get enough data, we can solve the previous set of equation, maybe by least square or something like that. Uh, those are just details that we need to fix, but details. At the end of the day, we have a score for everyone, so we can give prizes to everyone. We, we reward the best programmer, the best spoiler, and the best counter spoiler. So the idea of giving prizes to everyone is that in this way, the spoiler and the counter spoilers have some motivation to try to do the best work as possible. This uh, approach is about uh, code robustness and uh, uh, easy to debug, something like that. But if you want, for example, to reward the uh, easy of um, changing the code, you can do something similar. This is the Bell and Whistle competition. You have the programmers that write the code. The code is given to, let's still call them counter spoils for. Uh, commodity, but uh, uh, to the, those counter spoilers and to the counter spoilers we say, oh, add this and this new feature to the code. And you measure the amount of time required to add the feature. And still, the amount of time is a function of how well was written the code, how good the counter spoiler is, and how difficult it is to add the new feature. And basically the idea uh, are the same. So how much time I have? Okay. What now? As I told at the beginning of the, my talk, we are still working on this. Uh, we are still designing a web interface for code submission and stuff like that. Uh, we are still thinking about uh, the score model, the function that uh, I showed you a few slides before. And we are going to do some experiments. The first few competitions will be mostly experimental because uh, we need to see what it works and what it's not. And uh, if you want to keep in touch, I open a LinkedIn group. There is this website, it's a Google site I just set up two days ago, not kidding, uh, together with the LinkedIn group. And uh, if you want, uh, in the first slide, what is home? Yeah. In the first slide, there is my email address. So if uh, you want, uh, feel free to write me. And uh, I guess that uh, this is all. The usual slide of conclusion uh, that uh, we usually academic people do. So we have two minutes left before the time expires. No, we are still working on that. We, sorry? Okay, he asked me uh, that uh, if you, we already did uh, this competition yet. Not, not, not yet. Uh, we, we just started working on it, and uh, we thought that this uh, occasion was a good occasion to make you know some uh, to let people know about this. Uh, we hope to be able to do in uh, during this year. Right. Okay, the, the slide with the website. Sites, Google, counter spoiling. <laughs> 